Hello everybody and welcome to the Epic Flight Academy. This is the Private Pilot Ground School course and my name is Mike Thompson. Now you know we want you all to be very successful in this course. So that means three things. First of all, it means studying Epic's online course and reading and reviewing all of the related content there. Secondly, viewing these videos in parallel to that content. And thirdly, and just as important, review all of this content with your flight instructor. So today, let's talk a little bit about the human eyeball and vision in general and vision at night. Now, vision, of course, is very important for pilots. So to help us understand a little bit about it, let's take a look at this graphic from our online course. You see a cutaway here of the human eyeball, and I want to call your attention to a couple of key anatomical features. First of all, uh, let's talk about the pupil. And the, the iris um, is around this central pupil, and the iris is what allows the amount of light into your eyeball. Secondly, let's talk about the retina. The retina is uh, a series of cells that the light strikes and photochemically and biochemically, this eventually results in the sense of vision in the visual cortex in our brain. Now, that was a pretty simple one sentence explanation. How all of that actually happens chemically is quite fascinating. But on this retina, you're going to see that we have two types of vision cells. One cell is a rod and one cell has more of a cone shape. Now notice on the retina, there are quite a bit more rod cells and the cone cells are focused near the back of the eyeball, uh, near what we call the fovea. The fovea is the center of the retina and those cone cells are very, um, uh, very sensitive to different colors. The rod cells are less sensitive to color, but very much more sensitive to light. So you have a pretty good vision or a pretty good uh, a view of the cross section of the eyeball here. Another thing that I want you to notice is near the back of this eyeball, you see the fovea? And we said that's the center of the retina where your vision is focused, that light comes through the pupil and that picture is focused back on the fovea on the retina. Well, as your distance from objects change, your eye has to actually flex and move that pupil to change the focal point. Now these are some of the things you've probably experienced with your optometrist or your eye doctor in various visits. But notice, particularly in our cutaway, there are no rod or cone cells where this optic nerve leaves your eyeball. Now, the reason that is important is because it actually causes you to have a blind spot. And I want to help you demonstrate to yourself that blind spot. Now, this can be done very easily. We're just going to take a regular 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. And notice, I've made two marks on here. I've made a red circle and I've made a black star. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to focus on the red circle, which is on the right side of this paper, and I am with my hand just going to cover up my right eye. Now, I'm going to look at that red circle, and as I slowly move this paper towards me, I'll start at arm's length, 
move this toward me and that black star will disappear right there. That black star has actually disappeared as I continue to move, move it forward towards my eye. That black star just pops out again. Now it didn't actually disappear, it's still on the paper. What the heck happened? What happened was that focal distance was where it was focused on the optic nerve and not on the fovea. Yeah, let's try it with the other eye. Now I'm going to cover up my left eye and I'm going to look at the black star. As I move this toward my face, the red dot disappears right about there. So at this focal distance, that red dot was now focused on the back of my retina where the optic nerve leaves the eyeball. That's the blind spot. Now in another video we talked about some optic illusions, one of which was empty field myopia. Now, just to review empty field myopia, you can see in this picture from our online course, kind of this foggy, hazy condition off the right wingtip there. And it's not uncommon as a pilot or flight crew member, as you're sitting there, and you're looking out into this hazy condition and your eyes just sort of relax. And you realize, hey, I'm not really focusing on anything. It's kind of like that blank stare. That's empty field myopia, and what we need to do there is refocus our eyes. Look at the instrument panel, move your eyes around, and refocus. Now we've got a fairly good idea of the parts of the human eyeball and what some of these th different things do. Now let's imagine we're going to go out at night and try to effectively use our sense of vision. Well, obviously, there's a lot less light. That's why we call it night. And so our eyes have very few visual cues. Now, what happens in that case is my eyeball starts to depend upon the rods rather than the cone. And so I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but at night, if I look directly at something, it's more difficult to see. And if I look slightly off to the side, I can see this object more easily at night. Well, if you take a look at this picture from our online course, the reason for that is what we were talking about earlier. The cones in the back of the eyeball are much more light sensitive, and the rods around the rest of the retina are, I'm sorry, the cones are color sensitive, and those rods around the rest of that retina are much more light sensitive. So if I look off to the side of something like here, you can see this eyeball is looking out towards that airplane, looking off just to the side of it. That airplane comes into focus because it's now being focused on the retina where there are more light sensitive rods. These rods are 10,000 times more sensitive to light. These rods are least affected by the color red. So if you've ever noticed in airplanes or automobiles or trucks sometimes at night, the lighting comes up red. Well, that works really well for night vision, but when we've got charts in the aircraft cockpit, and there's a lot of red coloring or magenta coloring on this chart, like, oh, how about the sectional chart? And we're trying to do a cross country at night. We're looking at the sectional in red light. A lot of those red tinted or magenta objects on that chart will be washed out. So what's the answer? The answer that the FAA advises for us is dim, white light. Now, we're going to take this white light and just use it at the dimmest possible setting. How do I get there? I continue to dim it down 
just to the point where I can continue to see everything I need or want to see on that chart or that instrument panel. When I dim it past that and it's hard to see, I've dimmed it too far, turn it back up a little bit. And I don't want to turn it up any higher than that. I just want the dimmest possible white light. Okay, now the last thing to mention here as we talk about night flight are the position lights in the aircraft. So as I try to focus on aircraft at night, of course it's going to be very difficult to see them in the air and aircraft will have position lights. Now in 91205, notice our uh, excerpt here from our online course talks about 91205. The 91205 is the regulation that requires the uh, beacon light for the aircraft. 91209 is the regulation that requires the position lights for the aircraft. And here, the kind of the bird's eye view of this small twin, you can see that green position light from the aircraft's right wingtip is required to be in view through that arc. And you can see on its left wingtip that red position light and on the tail of the aircraft the white position light is required to be in view. So folks, that's a review of our eyeball, vision at night, and aircraft night light requirements. We'll see you next time.